What is up everyone? Joe Parr writes here once again and today is the first episode of the Writer's Thoughts and I'll be going over all the happenings in gaming this week as well as some other news and information that happened in the geek culture world and, and things that I've seen, what I want to react to and what I want to talk about going forward. Thank you guys for the support as always on this channel and also my Twitch channel. I do very much appreciate it. You guys have been amazing and I wanted to kind of get my thoughts all in one place and this would be the perfect opportunity. As you know, I'm a big fan of looter shooters, so we're going to start with Destiny. Destiny revealed that next week we're going to get the future of Destiny 2 in a live stream. That's after Season of Opulence drops, which is going to be on Tuesday. And then Thursday is going to be the reveal of what's going to happen going forward. And I, for one, am very excited about this because I'm a longtime Destiny player. And I think... This is the first opportunity we're going to see where Bungie gets to really dive into Destiny without Activision being involved whatsoever. Season of Opulence looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. They have a lot of activities uh, planned for that. And I have a uh, preview going up on Planet Destiny that you guys will hopefully check out at some point. But yeah, that information was, was huge because it, it shows that the Bungie team is excited about the future of the franchise. A lot of the developers, a lot of the people working on the game have tweeted about just how excited and just how much we should be looking forward to this event. So I'm excited to see where it goes. They haven't given any additional information, so there's still a bit of unknown there. But all told, I think it's going to be a great opportunity to dive in and see where Destiny is going from here. And I think that's exciting times because we can all agree that a good Destiny with all these different factors involved where they're trying to make all these pieces work is best for gaming. I think Destiny being a successful franchise is awesome for the gaming community as a whole. So for me, I'm personally excited about it and I hope a lot of people are too. And we'll, we'll just have to wait and see uh, not that long from now on Thursday and next Thursday. So next up, the other huge information that we got uh, this week was Call of Duty. The next iteration is going to be Modern Warfare. No sequel numbers, nothing like that, just back to plain old Modern Warfare. And even though this isn't a reboot uh, or a um, anything like that, there are a lot of things that came from this that were very exciting for me personally. Not necessarily just as a Call of Duty fan, but as a gaming fan in general. And the one that I would harp to the most is full crossplay. The new Call of Duty is going to have crossplay between PC, Xbox, and PS4, and that is amazing news. Dauntless also recently launched. That's a free-to-play kind of behemoth hunter, monster hunter type of game. Uh, a game that I also put out a video on my initial thoughts on. And I really believe that crossplay is the way of the future. Other franchises like Destiny that I talked about would be better off with crossplay and cross save, taking your characters from one to the other. I think that's a very awesome idea. And I think it's something that is just going to be industry standard in a couple of years, and we'll wonder why it never happened uh, sooner. Crossplay is something that I've been harping on for a long time, as long as it's handled right. Obviously, people will say, "Well, PC versus console, the frames, the uh, using keyboard and mouse." There's all these differences in gaming now. Most games like Dauntless, like uh, Fortnite have the ability to turn that off. So that's the um, fully the key. You want to be able to play against people on console, especially if you're doing competitive type games. But for when you want to turn it on, you want to play with all your friends who are on other consoles or on PC, I think it's a fantastic idea and one that, that I think all games should look at going forward. It might be difficult for some to go back and add it after the fact, but going forward, games that release from now on should absolutely strive to have that as a built-in feature. If not, they're probably going to be left by the wayside because the player base is just going to be so much larger for those games that do have full cross-play and cross-save that I think it's not going to it's not gonna make sense not to have it. As long as Sony is now playing ball, it seems like they are allowing that to happen in future games. It's, it's a no-brainer. So I'm excited about that. They also announced for the newest Call Call of Duty that there will be a campaign, there will be no zombies, and there's going to be other kind of ongoing, realistic type um, game modes. What that is, we'll have to wait and see, but it seems like they're going away from the 
fantasy kind of futuristic fighting and then the um the zombies mode is something that i know a lot of people have looked forward to but i like that they're trying something different last year they tried something different with blackout and not having a traditional campaign and i'm not necessarily against them going with different feeling call of duties every other year like say you one year you have a campaign and then this realism and then the next season year you have back to the zombies or alien fighting or whatever the case may be i think that would be a good way to keep the games feeling fresh and different enough because right now as of the last few years before uh, the black ops 4 i feel like a lot of the games kind of felt the same uh even if they were held in different time periods they had the same activities they had the same type of events uh, there was nothing really separating it was almost like um the sporting sport games like madden fifa those kind of games where every year feels the same with minor upgrades and different rosters that's how call of duty was feeling and i i'm glad that they're taking some risks and doing things a little bit differently if it'll pay off is another story because we've seen in the past they'll implement things and they don't always work as expected if that's the case i would also like to see their blackout br mode go free to play and uh, try to monetize like other free-to-play battle royales do because i feel like that's something they can keep going otherwise it's going to die off and i would worry about that they also announced no season pass but we all know call of duty and activision tend to try to capitalize on on the revenue as much as possible so no season pass but be don't be surprised if there's something else involved another way for them to really uh, generate as much income on that game as possible then we had some news on two games that I have been a big fan of, even if they've been a little underwhelming at times, and that's Apex and Anthem. Apex will have their Season 2 reveal next week, at or the week after at E3, but in the interim, they did announce that there's going to be challenges, a Hunt Master Pass, and, and things like that that'll keep people interested in what has been missing from the game for the last little over a month. The season pass for season one was lackluster. I think almost everyone would agree with that. It wasn't didn't feel worth a grind. I still grinded to level 100 because uh, I do enjoy the game still, even if there's nothing, no challenges to keep me going. Uh, that being said, if they do add these challenges, if they add some reasons to play day to day, I, I think that's huge for the player base in general. Um, things that well, maybe not take away from the gameplay as far as doing the wacky, crazy things that, that kind of Fortnite does, but doing activities that you would be doing anyway, but but focusing on them a little bit more is something that I would love to see them do. Whether that kind of revitalizes the fan base is yet to be seen, but at least it's a step in the right direction. And adding new skins for these events and new activities to do with rewards is going to be super important. Next on the list for them would be creating different game modes or altering the map or a new map. All of those things I hope are coming down the pipeline. Uh, and obviously a new character is set to be released with Season 2. And more ways to spend some of your Legend Coins. Uh, I, I know as someone who has reached the top of the Battle Pass, I don't have anything to spend some of my currency with. And that feels really frustrating at times. So I hope they add an, another way to, to spend that and to make use of those legend coins next up is is anthem a game that has kind of fallen by the wayside and biz, been frustrating the main team for anthem didn't tweet for uh about a month which i think is a bad move for a persistent online game if you're going to uh have that type of game communication constantly even if nothing is actually happening is a key like you need to have some way to keep the hype up and keep players from saying, well, they don't care about this game, so why should I? And and that may be kind of uh, an unfair thing towards the, the Anthem team, the Bioware team there, but I think it's something that they need to really look at going forward because they need the constant communication. We've seen with Destiny and other uh, games, Division, if you don't have that communication, then the fan base is going to take that as you're not doing anything right or wrong. So hopefully they, they fix that in the future. Now, the updates sound really good. Uh, they did release a little information about the Cataclysm, which was supposed to come out by 
the end of May, but it was pushed back a little bit. So I think that's something that we can look forward to if you're an Anthem player. Um, that being said, until they, they, they release a lot of updated content and make the world feel alive and fresh and have new quests and everything like that, it's still going to be a game that's not going to be played as much as that team would probably like. So I'm hoping that they stick with it. We've seen other games like uh, Sea of Thieves and like um, No Man's Sky, for example, fall by the wayside a little bit and then get revitalized by having really top tier talent or uh, um, content and revitalizing their fan base because the action, the combat in um, Anthem is is a lot of fun. The way the game is designed, as far as fighting and looting and stuff. All of those, that is great. It's the actual content that's struggling and making the grind feel worth it. I feel like both of those can definitely be improved upon and they have to really go out of their way to make that so much better if they're going to get a fan base to come back and stay around. Whether it works ultimately is, is yet to be seen because they might it might be too little too late. That being said, uh, there's a lot of people that still probably have the game that would re-download it and check it out if they come out with something that looks and feels awesome. So I'm, I'm hopeful for that. Uh, but again, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't 100% count on it at this point because it still seems like it's a little ways away. Then we also got the announcement that Death Stranding is going to be released in November. This is a game that, besides some weird trailer hypes, hype we haven't seen a lot um of actual details on and it's a typical kind of kojima like off the rails type game very very interesting got some have some big names attached to it as far as the actors like mads mickelson uh norman reedus and so i think that's contributing to the hype as well as the kojima name that being said we did get a little bit of information on it. it's going to be kind of like an action adventure game not really focused 100 percent on on combat necessarily but they said it's going to be focused on focused on strands which is the connections between the people across the world um or across the united states whatever it might be and the key is going to be connecting these various locations together uniting the people uh, against kind of a common enemy uh so we'll see i mean it's again it looks very very interesting it looks off the walls and it's something that i can't wait to see more of uh, I'm personally not, don't know if I'm sold on, on a day one purchase, but we'll see. I, I mean, I trust that the, the team behind it looks like they're doing an incredible job. The graphics are great. I'm definitely tuned into everything they have in store leading up to the launch. And I hope a lot of people are excited as well. <laughs> they even announced a collection collector's edition that includes one of those babies that uh, the main character carries around in one of those little bubbles. So that was very interesting. I thought that was a, a very clever thing to do because a lot of people are going to want to go out of their way to, to get that. And then we had, uh, uh, obviously we have the Avengers game that is coming out that more will be announced at E3. But we learned a little bit about it being a potential Destiny-like persistent world, which has co-op, which has... Uh, ongoing events and that type of thing now the developers who are making the game don't really seem like they have a history in developing that type of game so that's one cause for concern but it's still the avengers it's still a game that i know i am very much looking forward to because i think if done correctly and if you get the characters right and the feel of combat right and everything like that, it could be amazing. Now, we've seen with these types of games in, both, in the past, uh, Anthem, perfect example, lack of content at, at the beginning of the game when it launches is their number one downfall. Now, setting expectations, I think, would be huge. Kind of saying, okay, here is where the game is going to start. And then over the weeks, it's going to unfold. And that's when you're going to really feel the the full tale that, that is to be told. If you come out and you, you hype the game to a point where it's unbelievably uh, high levels of anticipation, that's when people get frustrated. And that's honestly why I think these games kind of get the flack that they do. People say that they're unfinished. Well, if you phrase the game as an ongoing game, 
and make sure that you people know that in the, in the beginning is just a taste of what is to come. It's almost like a, uh, a weekly TV series that you're playing a little bit of now, and then each week you're going to come back to it and get a little bit more, a little bit more. That could be very interesting. Whether they go that route or not is yet to be seen, but I think that's something that I would love to see be a common thing with games if they put them in that category because it's something that with, for example, Destiny going to their season mode, having something to do every week that feels a little bit different is is what the goal should be. Whether that's actually the case or not, we'll wait and see. Then we had Borderlands 2 and Sonic Mania being the PS Plus games of the month, which I thought was exciting. Best two games we've had in three or four months, in my opinion. I think both of them are really good. Borderlands 2, obviously, is the handsome collection is what's up there. And it's a great game in and of itself. Borderlands 3 is coming out uh, in September. So, obviously, there's a lot of hype for that. And this is the perfect way to build the hype and lead into that. And with the rumors of a potential Borderlands 2 DLC dropping at E3, that could just kind of explode with excitement there uh, as far as everyone being so ready for Borderlands 3. It's been so long since we've gotten the last uh, sequel. And uh, this will be a perfect lead in for everyone to get to know the characters because what Borderlands does a great job of is using characters from the previous game rolling them over as NPCs or characters who chime in at some point during the game and using them so that way you stay connected to the franchise. Obviously, Borderlands 3 is going to be a bit different this year uh, with it not just taking place on Pandora, which I like. Uh, going to explore different uh, planets is going to be amazing, and I think we're going to get to see a, a few more of those that are set to be released when we do get to E3 in a couple weeks. So that's awesome. Um, but Borderlands 2 is um, uh, a game I would say most people should pick up. And Sonic Mini is another one that I think is generally underrated. It's a better game than, than some give it credit for. And a Sonic game is always going to be a good call for something like PS Plus. Because I think it's something everybody can play. Everyone can dive into. Borderlands 2 is not a game for everybody. Uh, it's definitely one for uh, more mature uh, audiences. Where Sonic Mania is perfect for everybody. So I think that's a good mix between the two. And like I said, my favorite set of PS Plus games is in quite some time. We also got some new information on The Outer Worlds, which was featured a lot in February. And it's kind of fallen by the wayside. That's another one that's getting a further information at E3. But we did learn that there's going to be a lot of choices and consequences. Uh, very RPG-like with regards to... The way the game develops, which is not surprising considering it's coming from Obsidian, which is a uh, a developer that's known for its RPG mechanics. Uh, the Pillars of Attorney is a lot of heavy choice, heavy action. You develop the narrative and the, uh, the story over time. And I think the key to that is Outer Worlds is looks futuristic it looks borderlands like a little bit but keeping those rpg elements instead of the more looter shooter elements i think was what will separate it and keep it um feeling great now the word on the street is the release will be august 6th no con confirmation i'm sure we'll we'll get that announcement at e3 but either way that's a game i'm very very excited about and i cannot wait to see what they have in store i'm a big fan of the obsidian name and I'm very excited about what they have going on. I've talked about a lot about E3. I'll do a full E3 recap after it's over. All my thoughts, uh, games I'm most looking forward to, games I wasn't ready for, game uh, everything like that. I'll do that in a couple weeks once E3 is over. But for now, I'm going to... That's kind of everything that I've seen in the world of gaming. If you have any other stories that you want me to talk about, to touch on, leave a comment down below and I'll definitely do that. Outside the world of gaming, there was a couple other huge events that, that kind of broke. Obviously, it's been in the works, but Robert Pattinson being named as the new Batman was something I know there's been a lot of internet uh, speculation about and also a little bit of outrage. Everyone associates him with the Twilight movies, but I think he's moved on past that. He's not the same actor he was then. And that type of um, 
that type of movie was definitely set towards a different fan base. So I think we'll see a different actor. I think he'll be fine in the role. There was a lot of backlash when Ben Affleck was Batman. I think he did a fine job, despite the movies not being the best out there. So I, I think that's fine. I think he, he'll, he'll do fine, and he'll be a perfectly capable actor in that role. Whether the movie is good or not, that remains to be seen. Then we had uh, some of the Lion King images drop, uh, and there was a, a big talk about Seth Rogen's Pumbaa. Now, Pumbaa is a warthog, and so they went hyper-realistic with the way the, the warthog is depicted, and everyone was freaking out about how scary looking that creature was that's just what a, a pumbaa looks like though or what a warthog looks like so i think i actually liked it quite a bit i think uh it was crazy how timon was adorable like probably the cutest of all the um characters in all the movie i'm not a huge fan of these live action remakes personally i i haven't seen aladdin yet that being said i do believe that this is going to be the best of them, in my opinion. It looks like it's going to be my favorite, personally. And it's one I'm, I'm pretty excited for. I haven't had any complaints about the way that the movie looks or sounds so far. So, this is one I'll probably check out. But, again, I'm, it's just not my personal take to be excited about these. That being said, it's not really the, these movies are not really meant for me. They're meant for a younger generation. So, I fully understand that. And then, um, finally, we had a little bit of news that the Witcher television series set for Netflix has been completed. We also, um, that information was from Henry, Henry Cavill, the lead actor, and also that he expects there to be more seasons in the series, which would be awesome. Uh, we haven't seen what the series is going to look like as of yet, but in my opinion, it could be really, really good if done right. Another case of the actor playing the lead role kind of being questioned. I think he'll do a an amazing job. And he, I was just seeing some of the pictures. I think it's going to be an amazing series. And I'm very hyped for it. I'm a big fan of The Witcher 3. As playing on mostly PlayStation, I haven't had a chance to check out the other two. But The Witcher 3 was an amazing game. And I'm excited to see what they bring to the table on uh, Netflix. Besides that, uh, Jessica Jones is coming out, the final of the MCU Marvel movies, finally going to be released here in the next few months, and uh, I'm excited about that. I can't wait to see the kind of the conclusion of that. I'm sad to see all the characters' roles ending, but that being said, it's been a great ride. Uh, I was especially a fan of Daredevil and the Punisher series, but I will definitely, I will 100% watch the Jessica Jones series, and I hope that it turns out well. If it's as good as the first se uh, season, I will be super excited about that. Other than that, that's all the information I have for today. These shows are going to range uh, in time based off of what I have going on as far as uh, the news and gaming, how much is coming out, what's exciting. Maybe I'll go over some new releases and other games that I've seen in the future, but your feedback is greatly appreciated. I thank you so much for taking your time to watch this. My name has been Joe Perrights. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe. If not, no worries, and I will catch you all later.